John chapter um, John chapter five. We're going to start there, and, and we'll we'll get there in a few minutes. Um, we will be more on the brief side tonight. Uh, uh, Joe is waiting on us downstairs, and so um, uh, but we're going to go ahead and and uh, see how far we can get tonight. You know, we've been going through this thing on the family and on you know kids and all that sort of stuff, and there's all sorts of. Um, angles to this and um and you know there's there's a couple really important things that we're going to cover in the next couple weeks um tonight um i just want to talk to you about an observation uh that i have and i'm not the only one but that has watched occur in a lot of good families and um you know um, we are we're really big on on homeschooling and and there's a lot of reasons why and and that's not the end all and be all of everything we realize not everybody can do that um and so i'm just going i'm just going to leave that statement you know a person if, if a person doesn't homeschool that doesn't mean they're a bad person or a bad parent um but there are reasons why we've chosen to do that uh you know it's it's nice if if there was a good christian school to put a kid in but my, oh my, yeah, that's mighty hard to find also. Um, um, I remember what gave rise to the homeschool movement. Um, of course, a lot of parents had their, you know, I remember going to public school and uh, man, it, it, it was a wild place. And that was a lot of years ago. And uh, we didn't have all these crazy agendas that we got going on now, you know, um, you know, uh, everybody understood who they were, if you know what I mean. And that was never questioned. Um, but we still had tons of problems with immorality and drugs. You know, those things are not new. And 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 so here's what happened. Um, somebody came up with the idea of, you know, well, let's let's have a Christian school. And you know who started that idea? Uh, it wasn't these Lucy Goose liberal churches. It was the independent Baptist churches, the parents. Uh, some of those pastors, they said, man, uh, we uh, we want to raise our kids in a different environment. And so um, homeschooling wasn't even a thought. So I remember in our town, two Christian schools sprung up. They were both quite large. I mean, right off the get go, we're talking we're talking each school had three or four hundred students from kindergarten through grade 12. Uh, just overnight, and people love that idea, and he just boomed. And um, and when anything is new, there's always problems that arise while they're working the bugs out of the system. One of the problems that arose was people thought every all these Christian parents that had a really rebellious, troubled kid, they thought, "Wonderful! I know what will fix my rebellious child. I'll put him in the Christian school." Well, the fruit of that was, you know, the, the bad apples um, contaminate the whole crowd. And I remember being in uh, 10th grade, my first year in Christian school. And um, again, the, the staff, the church, everybody whose heart was in the right place. They were trying to do they were trying to do a good thing. And it was a good thing. But but at the end of that school year, like one third of my class got expelled for drugs. One third of my class, my I, when I say my class, um, I'm, I'm talking all us 10th graders. There was probably, you know, 30 kids in the class and um, drugs were flowing through that place because the and you know, we said it a week or so ago, changing the location does not change the heart. And so these kids that were druggies, you know, their 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 Christian parents threw them into the Christian school, thinking, "Oh, they'll they'll be surrounded by good and it will help them." But the problem was, they brought their wicked heart with them. And um, anybody that went to Christian school through those years, or, or I don't I don't know about recent years, I've I've heard about the schools in this city, the Christian schools. I, I, so I'm going to make a wild statement, and maybe I'm wrong because maybe you know of a good one I don't know of. 
but they're a disaster. That's what they are in this city. Now, maybe you know of a good one. And if you do, I want to know because I'd, I'd like to tell somebody. I'd like to help some people. And you know what that did? A bunch of us grew up in the, I went to Christian school, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. There were some good things about that. Uh, you know, they weeded all the druggies out that, that particular year. So we came into 11th and 12th grade. and It was pretty much smooth sailing, but there was still a lot of immorality and all that stuff. So all of a sudden, a bunch of us that went to Christian school, we graduated. You know, a few years later, we got married. We remembered the public school. We remembered the Christian school. And then homeschooling was birthed. People said, this is nuts. We don't want to throw our kids into this zoo. And that's where homeschooling came from. Again, homeschooling is um, a wonderful thing. It's, it, it is a blessing. It's one of those freedoms that, uh, that we pray we don't lose. Okay, so, so all that said, here's where we're going tonight. As the homeschool movement emerged and progressed, there were all sorts of tangents that began to appear. Um, it created a lot of liberty. You know, you some people, you know, you can use this curriculum. You can use this curriculum. You can mix your curriculums. You can use a video curriculum. You, there are a lot of things you can do, and a lot of it is really good. Some of it's really pricey, but but there's so much variety now. There's so many things you can do. But along the way, there came a few guys that they began to champion something. It was a very undisciplined, unstructured way of learning. The blessing of homeschooling is you can sort of adapt it to, you know, your family life. And um, the temptation is, the temptation is if you're not willing to see it through, if you're not structured, if you're not disciplined yourself, your homeschooling becomes a bit of a zoo. And where you really get clobbered is in learning to read. You know, this. Th there was a system that arose up out of homeschooling, and um, it was championed by a few different guys. It was called unschooling. It, was, it had a few names. And um, the thought behind it was, let your kid learn at, at uh, his own pace. Let your kid learn in a way that works for him. And that sounds all well and good, but it eliminates the element of discipline and repetition and let's get her done. And we can't wait forever. And you can't you can't be in third grade when you're 20 and you got to keep moving here. You, you got to do that. Now, you, you laugh at that. A lot of you in here, you're going to get married. And if God preserves that freedom, you're going to be homeschooling. So I want some of you, some of you, you're going to have kids in the near future. And I want to I want to stress something. It's, it, you'd think it's really simple, but it's not. You need to teach your children to read. You need to teach them to read young. You need to teach them to read well. And you can do it. But the problem with the, this other approach is you have kids that are 10, 12, 13, and they cannot hardly read. But the parents are okay with it. Well, you know, oh, you know, Johnny's going to learn to read, you know. And, and, uh, and so there's some real problems with that. And we don't have a lot of time tonight, so I'm going to fly. And I want you to reason with me. I want you to think you may not agree and I love you and I'm not asking you to agree, but I'm telling you, you, you better do this. Teach your child to read, teach them to read well, teach them to read early. You know, our, our, our way of thinking has really degenerated in, in, the, uh, in this wonderful, blessed age of all this information that we have. Um, you know, we're so far ahead technologically, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, of, of the days of the, the 17 and the 1800s. 
But are we really ahead? You have to ask yourself some serious questions when you read about the children of that era. And John Wesley, you know, he's like, he's like eight years old and he's reading in three languages. And he didn't go to a school somewhere. And, and, and so here's my point. So we got these whiners in 2020. Well, you know, I just, you know, I just got to let Johnny learn, you know, as, as, you know, as he wants to learn. You know what? The old timers that we admire, the people that built the foundation that we are living on, they didn't feel that way. They did not operate that way. Now, if you operate that way, please understand. I'm not being critical. I'm not giving you a hard time. Um, you know, that's not my point. That's not my point. I want you to see something. I want you to get your head around something for the kids that are yet to be born and that will yet be educated under your roof. Public education went through some wacko tangents and boy, it's still going through wacko tangents. But, but um, when I, when I was in first grade, Kindergarten, first grade, you know, I, I learned my alphabet, you know, and um, and I remember I, I don't remember, but I but I do remember some of this. Uh, I don't remember how they taught us in the classroom. Like, you know, no, no first grader goes, I wonder how they're teaching us. No, you, you, you're just along for the ride. You just can't wait till recess. You know, that's that's <laughs> that's is recess and lunch. That's the big stuff. And and, and gym class. Um, uh, but. They had introduced a program of teaching people to read, which was very detrimental, and it still is to this day. And it was called sight reading. And it's a way of teaching kids. You, you don't teach kids how to phonetically sound out words. You know, pH is the sound. And you put the pH and the A, and it's fa or fa or fa. You know, it just depends. You don't teach them the phonetics. You teach them R A B B I T. When the middle of the word rabbit is 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 the two B's, and it's like a little bunny with his ears sticking up. And so, <laughs> you you think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. And you know what they do? They learn to recognize words by their shape or by their length or by. It's called sight reading. That has not died. It is still out there. And there's homeschoolers that still operate on that philosophy. It is very crippling. You don't learn vocabulary. You don't learn spelling. You know, everything is crippled because it's a totally wrong approach. Well, that was what I was growing up in. There was no Christian school. There was no homeschooling. None of that existed. So one day, dad looks at mom. My dad looks at my mom and he says, he's not learning to read. And dad says, go to the store, see if you can find some. And, and she did. She went to the store. She got some. They look like coloring books, but it was like books to help to your children, you know. And, and, and so I remember I come home from school at three o'clock and I am sitting. You talk about frustrated. I was a live wire. I, I didn't want to sit down. <laughs> but dad ran the house and thank God he did. And mom sat down with me and she began to tutor me in phonics to make up for what the public school was not doing. That went on for a good year or two. And you know what I was doing? I started reading. I started reading the Bible. You say, oh, the, the Bible, that's a hard place to start. Oh, you'd be amazed. <laughs> you know, hey, listen, listen, this, this, is, this shows the height of our ignorance. Okay, you ready? The King James Bible is rated the easiest to read. You, you know why that is? It has more one syllable words than any new version by far, by far. And I can remember riding to church and I'd have my Bible in my lap and I'd be reading out loud. It just cause I wanted to. And dad and mom were up there and, 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 the, and I'd try to sound out a word. And, and of course he could tell where I was reading. So he'd say the word and all that to say, the school didn't teach me how to read. Mom taught me how to read long before that was even a thing. And man, by the time I hit third grade, I was a good reader. I was a good reader. 
You know why? Because my mom and dad decided this kid's he's going to be illiterate. And they decided we're not going to let that happen. Every large family will have at least one child that has some sort of a, a difficulty learning to read. And boy, that's always going to be a test or two. Oh, you know, Sally just has a hard time. You know, we think she's, she, we think she's ADD PFQ. <laughs> and, uh, and we, we, we also, we also think she's dyslexic and all that stuff. Um, I just want to say something to you tonight. Um, you, you may have one of those, you may have one of those and, uh, but I want to encourage you tonight. Um, they can still learn to read. We had one of those. We had one of those. And Mitzi worked with her the first year. She didn't learn to read. She tried it again the next year. She still didn't learn to read. And, um, and then we tried a new approach year three. She got it. And to, and to this day, we never did figure out what disability she had. And she was tested. And the tester said, yes, she has a learning disability. You'd never know it. You know why? She pressed and she learned to read. And today she reads well. Don't, 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 don't be part of this generation that hides behind this. Oh, Johnny's got it. Johnny's got Pythagoras' disorder. <laughs> do not do that. That's, that's an excuse. I, I understand some, some kids. I understand that there may be a, a legit, but you know what I'm saying? 80% of the time, somebody is using a scientific term and it gives them an excuse to be lazy. Can I show it to you in the Bible? Look at a few verses with me real quick. Look at John 5. <clears throat> John 5, look at verse 39. John 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they, the scriptures, are they which testified me. So uh, you think it'd be good to be able to start that as soon as you could? Wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't it be awful to be 25 or 30 years old and still struggling to read? When mommy or daddy could have taken care of that when you were six or seven years old. Look at Isaiah 34. Do these, you know, we're going to read a few verses here. Do these, do these verses only apply when you hit 21? No. Look at Isaiah 34, verse 16. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and say it out loud. Read. read. You know, you want to be a blessing to your children. You know, you, you may not be able to teach them algebra and higher math and trigonometry, and you may have to hire somebody to do that. You may have to, you know, get a video course somewhere, and you may have to find somebody in the church that can help you with that. But, you know, uh, it's just the foundation. It's, it's the foundation of, of them being able to go forward in their Christian life. Oh, Johnny got saved last week. Okay, what's going to feed him? Well, you know, he goes to church three times a week, and here's preaching. Praise the Lord. And the Lord will pour out grace, you know, where there's been a failure on somebody's part to do their job. God will pour out grace. But you know as well as I do, what do we tell new believers? You've got to get into the book. Well, that applies when they're this high as well. Put the tool in their hand. Put it in their hand. Make it to where they can do it. Look at 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. Now, again, again, please hear me. 
I'm not trying to make anybody feel like a failure. I'm not trying to make anybody feel stupid. I'm just trying to, to, to share a thought with you. You know what? Thank God for homeschooling and all the variety it brings. But there is a terrible mistake that somebody way back there somewhere fostered when they said, you know what? You can keep Johnny illiterate till he's 14. No, 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 no. That is a horrible mistake. No. You're, you're hurting me. First Timothy 4, verse 13. <clears throat> Till I come, look at verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth. Timothy was young. Now I realize he's a young adult here, okay? So I'm playing on the word youth, okay? But look at verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to, say it out loud. Reading. Reading. He says, you know, Timothy, he says, I want you to really diligently apply yourself. And he says, the first thing is reading, reading. Look at um, look at Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three. Second Timothy three, verse fifteen, verse fourteen. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child, from a child, thou hast known. The Holy Scriptures. Now, again, I just want you to see something by way of comparison. Okay. We live in a generation that they're so, so far behind our forefathers in so many ways. But we we are in a generation where, you know, um, certain things have become normal that shouldn't be normal. But we have no reference point. So suddenly when you refer back to John Wesley and being a little child, and he was just one of many. Those children were learning, you know, Greek and Latin and whatever, you know, uh, you know, at seven and eight years old. And 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 you know what? They were they're doing fine. They were doing fine. And 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 suddenly you have a reference point. Suddenly you think, wow. And my point is, certainly you could at least teach them English. You could. I mean, God didn't tell him you had to teach him three languages. But but we we know that that if they're cap if they're capable of that surely we can teach them to read. In traditional Jewish education, I I, I looked and did a bunch of research, and um, there's there's some places you'll go that they won't all say the same thing on this, but this is common knowledge. Now you get this in traditional Jewish education, students by the age of six would attend synagogue schools, okay? By around 10 years of age, they would have learned and memorized the first five books of the Bible. Yeah, and, and they've got in parentheses, yes, even Leviticus. <laughs> Do you understand what is possible? Is it so difficult that you just teach? Let's look, look, look. We're not asking you to do this. I'm, I'm glad God didn't ask me to do that. That's intimidating. Couldn't we teach him to read? Couldn't we at least do that? Is that so big when you consider that? It might take a little more time. You might have to work with. And you know what? Your kids will forever thank you. They'll forever thank you. Teach your kid to read and read well, because think about it. If if Johnny could read at six, but he's not reading well till he's 13. Do you realize you've lost seven years? Seven years. Seven years. Do you know what? You know what educators will tell you that specialize in memorization? They will tell you. Anything a child memorizes before the age of 12 is never forgotten and they never have to review it. Some of you, now I, there's the odd exception, I'm sure. But I remember being a little kid and mom and dad taught us, you know, they had this sheet with about 30 verses on it. And um, we memorized those to this day. I don't have to review those. It doesn't matter if it's been three years since I, I can still say them. But stuff I memorized last year, if I haven't went over it in the last six months, I almost have to start over. There's something about a child's brain. 
It's unbelievable. Why, why would you not think with me? Again, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I'm trying to just stir you up, trying to get you to think. The problem with that thinking that some well-meaning people have thrust upon us is they're, they, you're not thinking about years that are lost. Years that are lost. You know, there's a saying, readers are leaders. And that is very true. So if you teach them to read, and I'm about done. If you teach them to read, <clears throat> number two, teach them to read well, teach them to read well, teach them early, and then, and then, and then put good books in their hands. Put good books in their hands. Missionary stories, missionary biographies, biographies of great Christians, put good books in their hand. You need to systematically and very seriously take a hard look at how much time you're letting them sit in front of a screen. We've talked about this before, but there is a vast difference in the way the brain functions. The way the brain functions. There's a book you need to get it. It's called The Digital Invasion, written by two, H two PhDs. And they talk about the way the brain functions when it's been video bombed versus reading books from paper. And the difference is huge. I'm not saying they can't see something. I'm not saying you can't use a, a video learning thing. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, okay, you're done. Shut it off. Put some good books in their hand. Encourage them to read. Reward them. Give them motivation. Reward them for their reading. Make reading a joy. But make sure it's good stuff. Used to, you could go to the library. Now, if you go to the library, you know, about 80% of uh, ch children's books. It's witchcraft and the new age. And Johnny used to be Susie. And, and that's what it is. There's lots. There's tons and tons and tons of good books. Encourage them to read good books. Encourage them to read and reward them. And of course, of course, of course, of course, they should read the Bible. Man, if, if you're going to reward them for reading, reward them for reading the Bible, make it fun. You know, and we're going to talk about this on another night. We're done for tonight. But, you know, some people, you know, they're, they're going to they're going to chase in Johnny or Susie. So, you know, some well-meaning preacher somewhere, God have mercy, told him, take Johnny in the bedroom and preach at him for 10 minutes and then, you know, do a number on his hind. And, um, you know, no, don't beat them with the Bible. Make the Bible a joy. Johnny, you read a chapter today? All right, Johnny. I'm, I'm going to be silly for a minute, okay? Johnny, here's two Hershey bars. <laughs> you know, maybe you shouldn't do that because then Johnny will bounce off the wall for the next three hours. <laughs> yeah. Here, Johnny. Here's 50 cents. Here's make it a joy. Make it positive. Make it a blessing. Is 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 this not? Is it not the only book that came from another world? Is it not the book that will be here when heaven and earth pass away? Is it not the book that saved your soul and has kept you and helped you every moment of your life as a Christian? Let's teach our kids to read young so we can put it in their hands and they will learn to love it as we have. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord. Bless this simple truth. I pray it will not be forgotten. I pray you would take it and use it to encourage your people. Lord, in Jesus' name, bless it, Lord, we pray. Amen. All right. You are dismissed now. Everybody involved in the play, I think we need to make our way down to the auditorium.